we have lost about 1100 points. That is per contract. So you could have an idea how much this swing is worth per contract in futures around $57,000 per contract. And this is in this measured move. I also want to say that there is tremendous opportunity in the market and we are very fortunate and blessed to actually have the opportunity to st sit at home and uh, in lockdown and actually uh, have a job, I call it a lifestyle, where we can generate an income almost on a daily basis. Here are the differences between day trading and swing trading. So day trading is an income producing style of trading. Why? Well, because you get into a trade, you initiate a trade in the same, you initiate a trade this very day, this very moment. And by the end of the trading session, you're out, you are in and out, in and out, in and out. So you always have access to your capital. You want to buy something with your profit that you made. You have, an, you have, say a card, right? Your broker issues you a card. I, uh, I do have, uh, I do trade with TD Ameritrade, so I do have a Visa card from them. So if I want to spend my profit, I could spend it that day. If I want to, you know, uh, go grocery shopping with the profits, I could, I could do that. In swing trading, uh, swing trading is uh, a swing trading is wealth generation, right? You're generating wealth. You have your money locked in for periods of time, right? Uh, depending on the market environment. In a flat market environment, you could buy a stock or buy an ETF or buy a commodity or an index. And you could be in that index for a very long period of time until that index breaks out or breaks down of that pattern. So that could sometimes be days or weeks. I have been in that situation where the market literally was not moving we were in a really sideways range and guess what? Uh, my money was stuck, right? My money was stuck into this, uh, into the trade. Uh, sometimes in volatile market conditions, obviously in very volatile market conditions, you can achieve targets, you can achieve swing targets in one day or even less than one day. I'm gonna share with you an example of a trade that we executed today in oil in the trading room. Um, so, Basically, for day trading, uh, in day trading, uh, the reason why you're in and out is because your focus is small time frames. There are traders that like to use the tick chart. I am not a big fan of the tick chart, uh, but I do trade one, two, five, 15 minute uh, time frames. I specialize in these time frames for day trading. Uh, and uh, it is an income producing style, like I said. You get in, get out, the same day. You don't hold it overnight. Uh, and you're looking for very small swings, right? Within a trend. Uh, it is great if you wanna supplement your income. What better time to learn how to trade than now? A lot of individuals and a lot of you guys, I'm pretty sure you're at home and you're bored. Why not start studying, right? Because studying how to trade takes a long time takes a really long time. You really have to have like a really good solid education before you get in the market and fully understand the context of the market. You can trade any kind of market for income as a day trader. You can trade trending markets, volatile markets, because your execution, your precision has to be super keen. You get it in and out, in and out, in and out. And you have to be pretty much like a sniper. You have to um, look for that precise opportunity when to strike. On the other hand, swing trading focuses on bigger time frames. Okay, bigger, bigger time frames. So you're looking at daily charts, weekly charts. You're looking at sometimes even at four-hour charts, like it was in uh, oil today. In our example today, I'm going to show you the example. And you're capitalizing on opportunities as well, right? You're capitalizing on opportunities today and not only today, but this week we capitalized on some coronavirus opportunities. 
And I'm going to be sharing some opportunities with you guys. So you are prepared. We had made massive profits already based on coronavirus. We traded Gilead, G-I-L-D, ticker symbol, for profits. We have also traded DM, Zoom room. It is the exact room that we're using right now for this uh, meeting. So we're capitalizing on opportunities for any kind of situation. And also, obviously, in trending markets. In trending markets, trending markets are very easy to trade. You basically buy every kind of pullback, right? If you're uh, uptrending, if uh, the stock or the index or commodity or whatever you're trading is trending higher, you buy every pullback, right? Or you short every rally, depending on the trend. But it's really hard and you have to be a really astute trader to trade volatility. A lot of accounts are being blown up right now. Uh, Lisa has a question. She's asking, do you make money day trading in sideways market? Uh, yes, you do. Because your focus is on smaller time frame. And depending on the range, that will dictate whether the trading environment is tradable or not. Typically, if you are trading within a very strong trend, uh, let's say for higher, like we've had throughout this 11 years, you are expected to buy every breakout or every pullback. So that range that is developing within an uptrend, you're evaluating if the range is wide enough, yes, you can trade it. Even with confirmation, with the trigger price, you can trade ranges. In fact, I am literally the, the, the base queen because I love to trade ranges. It is my favorite thing to do. Love trading ranges. And that's one of the reasons why my performance skyrocketed this year and last quarter because we had a multitude of ranges. Um, Paul, uh, are you trading options in uh, uh, options or futures in your trading room? No, but I provide levels and you can trade futures on your own. I do not trade options, but you can use them to trade options on your own. Uh, Salmon, do you expect the S&P 500 or US 100 uh, is heading now? Any clue? Thank you. Um, Salman, I wish I knew, and I think that there are a lot of individuals that wish they knew uh, where the price is heading. I think that by far we have not found a bottom yet because the fear is out there and uh, there's a lot of panic and there is a lot of uncertainty that is looming. And I don't think. Uh, markets do not like uncertainty. And definitely now we are in a very uncertain environment because nobody knows what is going to happen with this coronavirus. That's why we have to be super safe. I have never, I, I mean, nobody has ever seen anything of this proportion on earth. Like literally nobody. So it's, it's really not, not pleasant. Uh, okay, so uh, we were talking about swing trades. I'm going to share with you uh, today's examples from, uh, from day trading in the, uh, in the next slides. But uh, for instance, for swing trades, we have uh, been in this trade. This is Zoom, right? ZM. And in fact, I literally, we don't have a lot of trades. For, for this whole entire month, we have been on a very low pace and we have been stocking for opportunities into the market. I don't trade markets that are snow, that are having the snowball effect, right? Uh, and plummeting like a waterfall, right? Climactic markets. I just wait until the opportunity comes. I just wait so when the pace accelerates, what I do is I take a step back, I look at the market and I just wait. I just wait until it calms down. Zoom was one of our first trades that we executed uh, for the month of March. Uh, huge potential. Uh, most of the conferences are going to be uh, done online. A lot of online work is being done, right? And Zoom is one of what had a perfect pattern 
So we didn't just get in just because it's going to be in use and it's going to be on demand, right? In high demand. No, we traded it on, um, uh, based on a technical pattern. So we initiated the trade at 116. It traded today at 132. So we're up like $16 in, uh, in Zoom. I started to compile about a week and a half ago, I started to compile a list of stocks that may have great opportunities for us. And these opportunities come from stocks that are, let's say, uh, have, uh, that are um, in strict correlation with what's happening right now. So there, I call them the coronavirus watch list, okay? Um, obviously, there are stocks that are going to be on high, high, high demand, okay? Uh, these stocks have really great potential for a push higher. Some of these stocks like Clorox, Procter & Gamble, Johnson & Johnson, right? Um, Target suppliers, Target, Walmart, Costco, you could see that the price action was literally pushing higher and they have formed a temporary bottom they're trying to hold because the demand is so high. Now, come second quarter, Walmart, Costco, um, Target are going to have tremendous, tremendous gains, right? And probably the earnings are going to be soaring in these stocks. Gilead, the development of vaccine, NVAX, I know these are all pharmaceuticals, mRNA, REGN, OPK. These are all coronavirus related. So these are things that we use, right? We, whether you, we use Purell or um, any kind of hand sanitizers or anything, you know, that is pharmaceutical or Tylenols, et cetera. These are the stocks, right? Clorox disinfectant. These are going to be on high demand, okay? On high, high demand. Also, individuals are working from home, right? A lot of cities are in lockdown. So Zoom, right? ZM was top of my list. Um, and one of the things that I wanted to mention is that you don't just buy them blindly. You just wait for the proper lining up of a setup in the market. Um, Hewlett Packard, there's going to be a huge demand of laptops, of uh, monitors, right? Uh, so Dell, Apple, uh, devices, actually components that go into these computers like AMD, uh, Intel, right? Microsoft, uh, also uh, Cisco, right? Cisco initiated a trade today in Cisco. Some other stocks like Campbell Soup, right? Uh, Hormel, uh, all the canned products are going to be, consumer staples are literally going to be uh, on demand, right? They're, they are going to see higher prices. PetSmart and Zoetis, right? Uh, PetSmart, right? PetSmart and Chewy. Chewy is uh, um, the delivery side, right, if you will. Uh, and it's going to be on high demand. Nobody's leaving uh, the house, so they're going to be ordering uh, food for their pets. Zoetis. Zoetis is also going to be a very interesting stock. I've missed a lot of opportunities uh, last year in Zoetis, but I think it's going to have a, a, a really good opportunity for us, and I'm literally not going to miss it in Zoetis. Uh, Zoetis is uh, derived from Pfizer. They separated about three, four years ago, and it is the, um, um, let's say, animal branch for, of pharmaceuticals that is derived from uh, Pfizer. Also, Comcast, right? Comcast is going to be on demand. You stay home, you have movies on demand, you're going to be watching TV a lot. Netflix, of course. Um, ATVI, uh, Electronic Arts, right? Electronic Games, uh, Amazon, right? Especially for deliveries. Like you could see that all these tech stocks are holding really, really well, okay? And why not throw Peloton in there, right? Throw Peloton in there. People are gonna wanna exercise. All right, 
So you probably are wondering, I mean, what's with the black swan from the cover of this presentation? Well, for most, maybe most of you have not heard about the black swan, but this is a book that I read. It came out April 17th, 2007. It was a very interesting book to read. I highly recommend it. It's written by Nassim Nicholas Taleb. And he basically he's talking about the black swan effect. So what is a black swan, right? A black swan is an unpredictable event that is beyond what is normally expected of a situation and has potentially a, it has potentially really severe consequences. The black swan events are characterized by, by their extreme rarity their severe impact and consequences, and it is widespread, right? Does it ring a bell? Coronavirus. So black swan events can cause catastrophic damage to the economy because they cannot be predicted. The term was actually popularized by Nassim, which is a finance professor and writer and former Wall Street trader. Taub wrote about the idea of black swan event in 2007 in his book called The Black Swan. Prior to the 2008 events and financial crisis. Okay, so I read this book. The book came out in April. Um, and I read this book in the summer of 2007. And when the financial crisis came in 2008, I was not surprised because that was a smaller scale of the black swan effect. And it, it, it did actually cover worldwide real estate market was dropping if you remember everything the economy right financials uh obviously in the entire world were under term were in turmoil so uh talib argued that because black swan events are impossible to predict due to their extreme ra rarity uh yet have catastrophic uh, consequences it is important for people to always assume a black swan event is a possibility, whatever it may be, and to plan accordingly. All right. So here it is. You can see the black swan right here. And this is the Mini SMP chart from today. So I took a snapshot and I wanted to show you. This is the first impact when news started to come in from China, right? Because China hid their coronavirus disaster for a very long time. So there's actually a research that is going on right now to see when it actually originated. And it seems that it was originated in September to October of last year. And they hid it. They hid all this information. So this is when the first releases were coming out of China. Number of deaths, people collapsing on the street. You know, they were trying to take measures. The hospitals were over-occupied. This is the first sign. But take a look at the date. This was January 24th. So what, it ha what happened afterwards? We, we just began earning season. Uh, we began earning season with first finan with, with financials, first reporting earnings. And we had some pretty strong earnings. And the market, of course, reacted for higher. This was a quick interruption in the trend because we didn't know everything was so localized into China, into Wuhan area, that nobody predicted that this was going to have such a huge extent and such a huge impact on the market. So the market continued to have their earnings releases and started to push higher, more drama coming out of Wuhan. Everything was started to spread and then really strong earnings from Apple, from Google, from Amazon, from tech, uh, from tech stock, et cetera, uh, took the retailers, took the price higher. These are the retailers last to join the rally where retailers 
which had some of them have really good, uh, really good earnings. And then the catastrophic things started to spread. You can see the high rate here, 33.97, and then boom. Okay, and then boom, started to collapse. A little bit of invigoration here, just because of the coil around the 200 SMA, and then back down. Okay, so this is the coronavirus black swan. The next thing I want to talk to you guys about is position sizing. Position sizing is very important for the success of the trade. In fact, position sizing will make or break your account. So the strategy is not as important as position sizing. You could have an extraordinary strategy for your entries. You could have an extraordinary strategy for your trailing. But if you lack position sizing, you're doomed. Position sizing represents the amount of shares or contracts the trader is willing to take per trade, according to individual account size and the daily loss limit. Obviously, when you begin trading, a lot of traders have no idea. They focus so much on technical analysis. They focus so much on charts. They neglect to look at the back office of trading, if you will. Position sizing should be determined by, number one, the account size, and number two, the risk tolerance, the personal risk tolerance. How much can you handle, right? Here's an example. If you have a trading account size of, I selected $50,000, which this is kind of like a median number that a lot of traders are um, trading with. So if you have a $50,000 account size, um, my personal, um, and I, I'm going to share with you what I'm doing and what I do. I never risk more than 1% per trade. Okay. I'm not saying that I have a $50,000 account size, but I'm just telling you that I trade with 1% risk and I don't trade on margin. Um, that's me. You know, you could, you take your own trading decisions. I find that 1% is on the very conservative side. I'm an extremely conservative trader, and this is what worked for me. This is how I was able to still swing trade and active invest my own money while I was working. And then when the time came and I literally decided to quit and take my uh, trading seriously and try to make an income from day trading and also continue with my swing trading and wealth generation process to trade my long-term money, I found that 1% uh, is the appropriate amount, okay? Uh, Gordon, I don't go, I don't use the margin. I don't use it. So if I have a $50,000 account, I'm not going to risk 5000 uh, $5, on a trade, which you can do. I trade, let's say, 500 So when you're day trading, you need the ammo. You really need to have a lot of ammo, right? And what that means is that as a day trader and for trading only two hours a day, I reserve and allocate um, about three to four bullets. I'm gonna to explain to you a little bit later on why I need these four bullets, three to four bullets. So I'm going to need to make three trades. And that is my workable ammo, right? Trades per day. So what does that mean? Because right now, like I said, you're beginning with $500 a trade, but it quickly adds up. It quickly adds up because if I'm risking $500 a day uh, per trade, per trade, that means that I'm putting at risk about $1,500 to $2,000 risk per trade, per day, I'm sorry, risk per, per day, right? Because I'm taking three to four trades. So you can see that if you're thinking and saying, hey, $500, you know, that's not a big deal. I'm going to risk a little bit more because I have, what, 50000 right? This is the mistake that a lot of traders are making because they do not calculate the possibility of losing that money, right? Every single time when you initiate a trade, 
you are at risk of losing that money. Think about this. In order to be comfortable in a trade, think about this. When you push the button on your next trade, make sure that that $500 doesn't weigh a ton on you. Because if you feel pressure that you're going to lose $500 on that trade, and especially if you're trading futures or even in stocks in, these, in this volatile environment, you're often going to see that you get triggered. The p &L automatically goes up and then boom, back down. And then when it goes back down, you're going to chicken out of the trade. You're not going to respect the stop because you're going to say, oh, I'm not going to risk that $500 because I see a down tick. Okay, I see a down tick. The reason why you need three to four bullets is because, number one, if you have, and by the way, the risk amount, this amount, this $500, based, on your, based upon your account size, is never going to change. Just because you have a $50,000 account doesn't give you the right to trade five contracts at a time because I know that 90% of the traders blow up their account and then there's this mentality out there that I have no idea where it came from, but it was so popularized starting with the social media era. I mean, there is one individual that is putting on a stupid thing out there saying, hey, I'm going to risk this. I'm going to, you know what? I'm just going to give five points in this trade for this trade. And I'm going to use five contracts. That is not trading. That is totally not trading. So if you know anything about trading, probably a self-taught trader would do that. And if it works for him or her, that's fine. But that's not the way to trade. Trust me. And you're not going to get anywhere. Okay. So you have one trade and you lose $500. You have the second trade, you lose another $500. Let's say you have a third trade and you lose another $500, right? So you have three losing trades. The reason why you need the ammo and you need to divide that risk per day into four or three segments, depending on your personal preference, is because when your third, uh, your fourth trade comes along, and if obviously you're respecting the risk to reward ratio of three to one or four to one or even two to one, that fourth trade is going to put you in the green. And at that point in time, you're going to be thanking your trading gods that you're flat on the day or even a one hour loss. You understand what I'm saying? Position sizing in volatile market conditions. In volatile market conditions, the risk is ginormous. There are ginormous ranges. I'm going to show you some examples. Uh, the setups have really wide um really really wide um hey guillermo um differences between the entries and the stop and this is what kills the traders because traders look at the pattern remember they're absorbed by the pattern they're absorbed by technical analysis they do all the technicals they do the fibs they do the lines they do everything everything that you can ask for but guess what they don't calculate the risk so they see the pattern, boop, they're in. And then shortly after they're in, guess what? <laughs> they realize that when the, when, when the price triggers and then it subsides a little bit because it doesn't always just move with high velocity in your direction, guess what? They realize that they're over their heads and they cannot respect their true stop because that would kill them, okay? That would kill them. So when I begin my trading session in the trading room every single day, especially since this volatility has started, okay, I know I sound repetitive, but I don't even start analyzing market before highlighting the fact that the market is still volatile and that you need to adjust your size to half. So remember what I said that you typically risk 1%. If you're a very astute trader, you can go ahead and risk two or 3% and that's fine. That's fine. 
Okay, that's fine. But you have to be in your comfort zone to do that. And you have to be a really astute trader. But in volatile market conditions, I reduced my size. Yes, I have traded micros. And you can go on my website. If you hover your mouse over the trading room tab, there's another tab with performance portfolio. And if you click on that, you're going to see that I traded a couple of trades using micros, okay? Because the volatility was very high. I could position size better for that. It's better to have a little piece of the pie than no pie at all, right? What? Make little money if you can, right? Make some money instead of having no money or having a loss. Uh, Salomon, how long the volatile markets will uh, stand, will remain? It's hard to say. The market likes certainty. I truly believe that if we are starting to, with this 15 day, 14 days now uh, lockdown, and if everybody's gonna do his, its part and the numbers are going to decline, we're probably gonna have a temporary bottom in the market. Remember that this volatility that came into the market and this sharp drop came on a, uh, uh, came on a very strong economy on a very strong economy. Now that things have changed, have changed a lot. Cruise liners, airlines, uh, Boeing, uh, plane manufacturers, they're all having a hard time. Um, vehicle, manu vehicle manufacturers, right? GM, Ford, uh, they're gonna have trouble as well. Everybody, ret uh, uh, retailers are gonna have a lot of issues. Uh, I mean, there are a lot of sectors, right? Restaurants. Uh, I posted on Twitter and on Facebook, I believe, uh, a chart of the restaurant sector. It, it, it's devastating if you look at it, right? But if everyone does, the, does their part and stays home, all you have to do, like in World War II, everybody was rushing after Pearl Harbor to sign up to go to war, literally risking their lives to go to war. And all you have to do right now is be a couch potato and you're, you're considered to be a patriot, okay? Um, so back to volatility, back to volatility. Day traders would need to use half the size. <laughs> no worries about typos. <laughs> okay. So, um, use half of your regular size because like I said, it's better to have a small piece than no piece at all or a big loss. So this way you're limiting your losses. Okay, why do you need to use this? Well, obviously you're limiting your, you're limiting your losses because in a volatile market environment, stop losses are very common, okay? You're going to experience a lot of price gyration that is translated into stop outs, especially if you're day trading or even attempting to swing trade. Risk tolerance can be different, perceived different than your risk to reward per trade. Um, and it's time to understand the implications per day and per week, right? The other thing is that, let's say hypothetically, you know, John in here has an $100,000 account. Based on his $100,000 account, if he is applying a 2% risk on his trading, right, on per trade, again, per trade, not per day, that is $2,000. That is a lot of pressure, especially if you're a new trader. I have had traders that had million dollar accounts and they started to use 3% and they were in shock that they were losing before they started to trade with me. And that's why after losing half of their accounts, and I'm not kidding, I have uh, 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 one, a student, she's a female. She started with twelve hundred dollar uh, with a with a, a one point two million dollar account, and when she got to like five hundred fifty thousand, she decided to get education. So she came to me for help. She made it all back. She has been trading with me since two thousand fifteen. She made it all back, and now she's she's way up there. Tripled her account. So you have to know how to handle big accounts, okay? 
So even if you have a big account, you're just starting off trading, don't just blow money out on a 2%, right? Because that 2% per trade, based on the risk to reward ratio and based also on the, the position sizing and risk per day, if you're having your three ammos, right? Your three bullets per day, that's $6,000. You're blowing up $6,000 in a day. What if you're having a bad week? That's $30,000 out of your account. Right now, you only have $70,000 in your account. That's why I said, use a conservative amount. Trust me, you're going to make more money with little money because you're not going to be trading scared. Also, if you have a smaller trading size account, don't use a large size because you're putting yourself under a lot of pressure. I always tell individuals, if you have a smaller account size, like, I don't know, $3,000, $5,000, why not use an account um, that, why not use a prop trading account? We have a great partner with Topstamp. I'm going to send you all the information. Um, and uh, why not risk their money? Don't risk your money. Okay, don't risk your money. And then once you learn how to trade, prop accounts are great to learn how to trade because they keep you in check. You have a certain limit amount per day and it limits you to that day. So it teaches you how to be strict with your funds. So there are different sizes of accounts, right? There are small accounts, medium accounts, and large accounts, right? And they all should be treated dif different, differently. And they, you can trade differently. For instance, if you have a small account, small account is considered smaller than 10,000. You could still trade futures. You could trade micros. You could trade minis, right? You could trade micros. This is the best thing that ever came to the market. The fact that you have uh, mini micros that you can trade. You could trade now the mini micro S&P, NASDAQ, Russell, et cetera. So you have instruments for every account size, for small account sizes, for larger account sizes, for gigantic account sizes, et cetera. You can also trade minis. And by the way, there's a micro available for copper. There's a micro available for gold. There is a mini available for gold. There is a mini available for oil, right? Which is about half the size. So you can see that there are a lot of things that you can trade. All you have to do is position size. Uh, Dan Topset has a lot of rules and uh, months fee. Okay, okay, uh, okay. All right, earn to trade. Okay. All right. Um. Okay. So you can either trade futures. Or sometimes if you have an account of $30,000 or more, you can participate and actually trade stocks or ETFs. And you can trade the Qs or the SPIs or you could trade individual stocks, right? And sometimes these Q, the Qs and the SPIs have a little bit more flexibility because you can position size better, a share size better sometimes than futures, but sometimes. Known fact, the number one reason why traders blow up their accounts is position sizing. It's not that they're lacking the strategy. It's not that they're lacking anything in their system. They're just not position sizing. Uh, Cam Leash, uh, during trading room hours, do you guide about entry, exit, and stop loss before time? Yes. Actually, we do use limit orders. We... Uh, actually, we put in the limit order in uh, oil more than 30 minutes, 30 to 45 minutes before the trigger. And obviously, I was live on the mic and trailing it. So I do all the work in the trading room. So I call the trade before. I, uh, I do it on the mic before it obviously happens, at least five minutes to three minutes before the trigger. Uh, I type it in the room, so I'm only using limit orders. So that gives me the flexibility to have the time to post it in the trading room. They're all timestamped. And then once the trade triggers, I am 100% on the mic and I'm guiding 
my traders to exactly what I'm doing in my account. So they're carbon copying my account. And yes, margins have increased. Number two reason for blowing up accounts, um, not knowing where to place the stops. That is a big, big deal. Not knowing where to place the stops. A lot of traders, and if I, I don't, I don't even want to ask it tonight in the room, but if I ask you where do you place your stops, I am going to get a variety of uh, statements here, okay? Some of you enter a trade, and guess what? You were telling me, oh, I'm giving it two-point stop, or I'm giving it a five-point stop, or I'm giving it a 20-point stop based on this volatility. Some of you are going to say, oh, I'm going to do this or that. Or There's only one way, if you want to do it technically, where you can place a stop, okay? Depending on the market structure and depending on the setup, for short positions, you put the stops above the pivots. And for long positions, you put the stops below the pivots. You don't put it in between. You put it in between, you're going to blow up your account. Trust me, I am telling you this as a friendly reminder. I've been doing this for over 20 years, and I know what works and what doesn't work in the market. What is risk? Risk is the difference between the entry and the stop. And without this information, you cannot position size. Okay, you cannot position size. In a normal market environment, this is what a sell setup looks like. You want to see uh, a waterfall down, or you actually had one set up here, but this is exactly what I did. So I shorted it here. So uh, this is an example from actually last year's trading. Memories, they were trading, S&P was trading at 3,000, right? So this is a really nice setup right here and it's lining up perfectly, it's trading below the 20 SMA. You can see the, uh, this is uh, the setup and development. This is the cone that is forming and this is the trigger candle. The entry short was 3011 and the stop was placed above this high. I don't place it in the middle. I don't place it here. I just don't give it $500, let's say, risk. Your $500 risk, when you have that risk of $500, you have to position size for that, okay? So your entry is, uh, your entry is based on the setup. This is the trigger candle right here. And within this context, within this context, based on the setup that you see developing here in the market, the risk is two points, right? Because your entry is 3011 and your stop is 3013. So based on this stop, right? Based on this stop, the difference between the entry and the stop uh, is two points. So that means that I have a $100 risk per trade right here because there are two contracts, right? $50 is one contract. So if you are using a $500 risk per trade, question, how many contracts are you going to enter the trade with? Type it now. Thank you, Garland. You got it, Nancy. Thank you, John. Perfect, 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 perfect. Awesome. Good job, guys. Five contracts. This is position sizing 101. What would have happened if we had, let's say, a five point stop here? Okay, what would have happened if we had a five point stop here? Okay, so remember, one contract is $50. One contract is $50. All right, I'm waiting for you guys. I'm waiting for you guys, right? So we have a five point stop, right? And that is times 20, that is 250, right? So you take two contracts, right? If you have a risk amount, exactly, Garland, you have a risk amount of $500 per trade, you take it with two contracts. You initiate the trade, perfect, Gordon. You take the trade with two contracts. You understand how position size work, works here? Okay. 
Awesome. Good job. Now, this is from today. This chart's from today. The entry is 2402 based on the same strategy that we apply, either it's a pullback buy or a pullback sell. The entry is 2402 and the stop is 2360. Look at the risk. In a volatile market, 42 point risk, 42 point risk. Now I'm gonna ask you with the full size contract, that is a 20, 100 risk per contract. What happens if you only want to risk $500? What happens if you want to risk only $500? Number one, you do not take the trade with a full size contract. Number two, you go to micros and because this is 10 times the size, the full size contract is 10 times the size of a micro, you would knock one zero down, you have 210, so therefore you take it with two micros. And now you have a $420 risk per trade. You don't exceed 500, you stay within your limit. Does that make sense, guys? Awesome. Risk to reward. The success of the trade can only be considered only if you take into consideration the risk. Stop falling for all the gurus that are out there and they're sending you emails. I get them too. I have no idea how they get how I'm getting on their list, but they're sending emails saying, "Oh, I'm uh, I'm seeing a $27,000 opportunity. I made $42,000 today. I did this today." Okay? You do not know how much they risked in order to have those results. What if they told you that they made $37,000, but they risked $150,000? How would you feel about that? Would they be a good trader or would they be a bad trader? Risking $100,000 or over $100,000 to make $30,000? Or risking, let's say, exactly able, uh, not safe. It's insane. It's insane. You do not risk that. That is an asymmetric trade. That is an asymmetric trade. It's very bad. It's super bad. You want to risk $500 and you want to get out of that trade at least $1,000 or $1,500. Especially in this market, you could look for two R's. Oh, yes, definitely. Because they don't have, yeah. Uh, D, you have a point. They never tell you how much they lost in the trade, right? They only give you those incredible results because they don't have a transparent portfolio. Oh, exactly, Michael. They may be in a simulated account, of course. And the other thing is it could be with a huge size, with a huge size. You know, since we're talking about size, you know, I, I could tell you that I'm, I'm really not using more than five contracts in a normal market environment. Mm -mm. Nope, not me. I'm not. Okay, so before taking the trade, the trader needs to evaluate what? The risk. So don't always look only at the pattern, but assess the pattern, the entry, the stop, the entry, the stop. This should be on your mind all the top. Entry, stop, target. Where does it go to? Okay, before you take the trade. And then of course, obviously the risk and the potential reward. If the risk is asymmetric, the trade should be skipped and the trader should wait for a better setup. Now here's the thing with waiting. A lot of, patient, a lot of traders don't have the patience, but here's the reality. You don't have the patience to wait for the setup. You're not going to have the money. So you have to wait for the patient, uh, patience and you have to have patience and wait for the setup. All right. What is an asymmetric trade? An asymmetric trade is where uh, is a, is a, a, a cluster or is a formation, let's say a setup that is developing in the market where the trigger price is very close to resistance. So that means that it's not going to have that velocity to knock out that resistance in one shot and move higher. So it has a lot of, um, uh, uh, it has the, um, um, it, I position size down. I position size. I'm, I'm going to show you some uh, examples today, which pretty much have into the same parameters. 
Um, so an asymmetric trade is a trade that you initiate and it doesn't have a lot of room to run because the resistance is so close. If you're uh, wanting to go long, the resistance is so close that you're risking, let's say $500 and the next resistance point is where you're going to probably be making a hundred dollars or 250. Okay. Uh, Dan, the reason for my, uh, and I'm going to share with you, I mean, you can see my results on the result page. Um, obviously a position size for everything. So it's not a standard five contract I, by all means. Sometimes I take one contract. Sometimes I take micros and sometimes I take five contracts or sometimes I may take, take, I don't know, 10 contracts, depending on the stop, right? If I have a really tight stop, uh, I'm going to be using that. I typically use 1% because I run the trading room as well. And, um, I don't want to be under pressure, okay? Having smaller size, and when you're undersized, you're not feeling the pressure, okay? Because if you um, have a good trade that starts moving higher, and if you're under pressure and you have not seen green in your account in a very long time, you're probably going to be choking the trade. But if you are undersized, you're going to let it run. And the reason why I love position sizing and is because you, you, you could offset some targets, you could take some profits along the way. Okay. Okay, so let's continue. What is a good risk? A good risk for the trade is when the trade has the potential to provide at least two to three or more risk units per reward. So for example, the S&P short, two points, like I showed you before, six, so it made Let's go back to this example right here. So by the time it got back into the support level, it already generated a lot of profit. It generated three times, see the size? See, oops, sorry about that. It already generated three times the size into its basic support right here, okay? Into the basic support. The other trade from today, uh, originated again. So this was the first target. We were happy with this first target. It would have generated twice, right? It would have generated twice the risk. And then it provided the third right into this pivot high. Okay. So you have to make sure that you have plenty of room for a continuation uh, higher. Uh, these are my two trades today. And you can see I uh, I risked almost a thousand dollars on the trades today and I got three R's out of oil. You can see that you can see it right here. So, uh, I was typing it, uh, typing it in a room and I was on the mic and I was, uh, saying, okay, we should get out here get out here. Okay. So by the time we should, we, I, I literally put a, a, put a trail stop on it. it uh, uh, it took me out. I was up like 3,200, uh, in the trade. So I got out with. 2,900. You can see it right here. So this was one of the trades that we called today. Uh, I called today into the trading room and had uh, had a fantastic risk to reward for me. And uh, also this trade right here that we closed with a little over one hour because the market conditions changed. And then uh, the reason why I closed the trade was because it was uh, right before President Trump's br briefing. President Trump speech briefing and the task force um, an announcements that were, I think it was around 11 o'clock or so. And uh, I don't like to trade under pressure because you don't know uh, what the announcements are going to be. Is it going to be for the be better? Is it going to be, I was on the long side, fortunately, uh, in this trade. And uh, I just cut the trade off, especially indices are highly, um, under pressure on any kind of announcement. So these were my trades. So basically today in volatile market conditions, I pulled over $4,000 out of the market in less than two hours. In fact, it was basically in an hour, an hour and 15 minutes or something like that. And from home, okay. Um, successful traders versus unsuccessful traders. Uh, successful traders are educated uh, versus unsuccessful traders, which are not educated. They just boom, hit the market, open a trading account. And then, you know, it's fine if you think that you're going to do the trial and error thing. Uh, how many contracts here? You could see them right here. Okay. I have three contracts here. And like I said, the risk was the same. All right. So I risked about thousand dollars on each trade. This trade generated three times my risk. 
And you could see it right here. I had three contracts here. It just so happened that I had three contracts because the risk is the, was $1,000 in both. And it was three, three contracts for both. And here I ended the day with one R and that is because it was just before the briefing and I didn't want to have any surprises. It was a decent amount for me and I didn't want to put the stop and break even. So $4,000 a day, this was called live in the trading room today. Uh, and uh, this was in less than two hours. So you need to be prepared and know how to trade every single cycle in the market or find someone that has been trading every cycle in the market so is well-educated because if you wing it, it's not going to work. You're going to blow up your account. Um, mitigate risk. Uh, successful traders mitigate risk. They know how to uh, uh, assess risk. Um, unsuccessful traders, guess what? They have no idea. You know, they wing risk. Okay, oops, sorry, that. Uh, successful traders learn from failure. They learn from the mistakes that they've done. And unsuccessful traders, guess what? They repeat failures because they have no idea what they're doing wrong. Uh, successful traders, they always adapt to market conditions. And unsuccessful traders, guess what? They don't adapt. They insist. In fact, uh, I read an article not long ago that there were so many traders stubborn on tr uh, shorting Tesla, right? And Tesla almost ran to what, $1,000? We made couple of hundred dollars, no, few hundred dollars on Tesla last year and this year. Few hundred dollars in swings. I mean, this is unprecedented, unprecedented. Um, so we had phenomenal. So for swing trading in stocks and for futures, it was just in these last four months, I could literally tell you right now, I could stop trading for five years and I can live comfortably, not trading at all. Exactly. So the market is always changing D. Uh, so not adapting is suicide. This is what D is saying right now in the trading room. It's true. So you always have to adapt. Don't be a perma bull and don't be a perma bear. Just always read the signals in the market and don't be complacent, right? And don't be ignorant. Just look at the market signals. If you're having a reversal and you're long, get out. Do you could always always get back in, right? Always get back in. Lock in those profits. Successful traders believe in an accountability. Guess what? The performance portfolio that you see on the website, that's not for everyone to see. That is for me. That's my accountability, the trades that I execute. And guess what? I do have my statements, but guess what? That those I'm not gonna keep a I'm not gonna go through those statements every single day but I can see my performance and I can see in volatile market conditions that I did good or bad. I can assess. So those results that you see there on a website, they're not for traders to see, Hey, I wonder how she did today. Or I wonder what the, you know, uh, how she did in 2017 or 18. No, that is for myself. I keep that record for my own accountability. Most people think they can do, uh, they can do trading, they can trade actually on their own and become really good on their own. Okay, but the reality is how many great sports people have had coaching, right? Have you seen uh, all, you know, whether you're uh, looking at, um, you know, anything, baseball, uh, um, soccer, football, et cetera, like whatever sport, boxing, everybody has a mentor. Everybody has a coach that is literally coaching them to, for success, right? You need a personal guidance, right? And this is what I offer to all my students. I'm offering my time. That's why we don't take a lot of students every month because I take care of individually. So if there is a student that needs help in a specific area, guess what? That trader has a hundred percent undivided attention. And we strained that matter out because when it comes to trading, there's no silly question. So they're very fortunate. I wanted to, when, when I first started retail trading, um, I wish I had a trading room that I built and I wish I had the education that I am literally, literally offering. Okay. So trading results. Let's take a look at the results here. This is very interesting. These are the results from my trading room. Um, so in January, Hey Todd, 
Um, I'm going to answer your question a little bit. Uh, let me wrap up and then I'm going to, uh, we still have a little bit, a few more slides. Okay. Okay. So, um, these are the January results. You can see them right here. Okay. Uh, and I even forgot to add the last rate, which is $6,000 right here. But if you go to our performance, it's already there. This is an older slide. We made $6,000 in the gold trade while we closed. So that brings up the total per month to $12,000. And this is trading with one contract. Okay. The results are per contract. And you can see here that we have 37 trades. We had eight losing trades and we have 45 of 45 trades in total. And the RIN ratio is 82.22%. This is laser sharp precision. Okay. This is laser sharp precision and trading because trading is about having small losses, big wins, right? A uh, few break even trades. And that's pretty much it. Um, this is February results. You can see here, uh, $10,000. So we had a really good, and the results are again, are per contract. Okay. Uh, we had 26 winning trades. We had four losing trades for the month of February and we have 30 trades in total. And the win ratio is 86.67% in February. Are you ready guys for March? How do you think March was? How do you think March was? The month is not even over. The month is not even over. We had 15 winning trades. We only had two losses. Take a look at our losses right here. I want you to take a look at our wins. 5,000, 2,000, 2,000, 2,700, 1,200, 700, 1,000, 2,000, 1,500, 1,000 here. And guess what? Look at the losers, 750, 264. The winners are big compared to the small winners. So we had 15 winning trades, two losing trades, 17 trades in total this month, win ratio 88.24%. All trades are time stamped in front of a live audience every single day in the trading room. So trading is about not only knowing, you know, precisely how to handle the platform, how to trade, how to find, you know, how to find your sweet spot, how to find your strategy, how to find, uh, how to find an entry, how to find a stop, you know, everything. Um, it's not only about market dynamics or technical analysis or multi-time frame alignment or pinpointing the entries or accuracy in determining stops or establishing targets or trailing or controlling risk or money management or psychology. No. Or what we talked about tonight about position sizing or risk to reward ratio or everything. No, it's about how you put everything together. Uh, so would you say your method is more suited for volatile markets? No, I'm using the same method. Clark, uh, that's a great question, by the way. No, I'm using the absolute same method. The volatility is just pushing the price to our targets faster. And because you're having velocity, bigger velocity, there's more panic and there's more greed or there's more, you know, uh, it depends on those two things. But the strategy that we use, uh, the strategy is the same. The only thing that we do differently is the risk. We handle risk differently. We use less risk, so we feel less pressure. So we let the price run more than we usually do in normal market environments. If you're not applying all the elements, literally, the market is going to kill you. The market is going to kill you. It, it, the market is relentless. And guess what? The market is always right. And I don't know, but... I don't know about you guys, but if I happen to do a mis to, and I make mistakes sometimes in the market and instead of hitting the buy button, I hit the sell button because I, I'm typing in the room, I'm doing this, I'm doing that, and I'm trading live and you could hear me live. You could hear, hear my orders go click, click, okay? And you can see them on the screens. So sometimes I do, I have accidents and instead of long, I go short. Guess what? I, it never happened to me to say, hey, you know what? I accidentally click along and it went up. No, it had to go on the other side. <laughs> I'm telling you, the market is always there to take your money. Um, 
You may take some money here and some money there, but you will never achieve consistency and grow your account if you really don't know what you're doing. Um, and you will always be chasing the dream and not living the dream and achieving that financial independence. And Ron, yes, this is recorded. I have, uh, I have a plethora of reviews and they're scattered all around. We're working on a new website where we can bring all the, uh, all the reviews together. Um, and uh, you can see right here, like I'm just gonna go very briefly because I don't wanna keep you. I know it's very late. Maybe you want you know, uh, to do something else and watch a movie. Uh, but definitely uh, take a look at some top-notch education, education at the highest standard, more than I expected from an online course, the constant market analysis and live trading with laser sharp entry stops and trailing provided uh, through the trading room uh, changed my trading habits. Uh, also above and beyond expectations, I have been with Trade Outlaw for three years. The training room is at the highest level of professionalism, no fluff, just 100% focus on trading. So you get the pictures. The futures course is robust, comprehensive, and very detailed. I give it a five-star rating. Uh, if you want to succeed in trading, this is the place. It is a place for a serious trader. These are all verified orders. Okay. So trading in lockdown, guys. If you now literally have the time, right? So if you can't complain and say, hey, I don't have the time. Or so maybe some of you are still working, but I know some, most of my friends are working from home right now. So now you have the time. You don't have that excuse and say, hey, you know what? I work and then I have to get home and then I have to you know, uh, cook and I have to do this and I have to do that. No, now you have the time. You have the time to learn. Now's the best time to learn. You, you have 14 days to learn how to trade. Okay, use your time wisely. Um, and if you have the money, why not? Start, uh, uh, start building up that portfolio, put some money aside. If you want a recession-proof skill, I mean, we flourished in 2008, we shorted. I remember the days when I would go in the market and short Lehman Brothers. I, don't e I didn't even need to have a trading plan. I was shorting Lehman Brothers every day and I was shorting financials right? I was shorting financials every day. It was literally like my, 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 my hobby. I was done again in two hours and I was trading only in the morning. I was shorting stocks. That's it. And I was shorting financials because they were in a pickle and guess what? They got hammered. And then in 2009, once, this re once, once the reversal occurred, I was on the long side. So you make money when the market is going down. You make money when the market is going up. So if you want a steady stream of income, right? This is your route and if you want to make money from home guess what this is the place so it's time to become educated and it's time to take advantage of the market moves by knowing how to trade by knowing what to do and having access to a complete system that will allow you to eliminate any unclutter from your trading, you're gonna be able to unlock any chart, any time frame, and any instrument. You learn how to trade, whether futures or stocks, we do uh, classes for futures, we do classes for stocks as well. You can trade anything. There's always something that is gonna get going to move. Cryptocurrencies, you, you can trade cryptos, you can trade stocks, you can trade futures, etc. By the way, futures, the CME is closed, Futures are 100% trading electronically starting on Monday because there are two individuals on the, floor, on the NYSC floor that were tested positive for coronavirus. They decided on the 23rd to close the floor and it will switch to electronic trading, which is fine, right? So the market is always going to be open. And guess what? Even if it's not going to be open, learn how to trade. And there's always something to practice on. Even if it's in a simulated account, just practicing cryptos. The patterns are the same. Nobody can take the patterns and the strategies away from you. Day trading or swing trading or active investing, anything. We teach a class that is the Power Income Futures Trading Course. It is an institutional grade tra trading system, which is comprised with my 20 plus years in the market. Uh, you trade stress-free, any kind of level, and clear levels in the market. We're going to teach you how to recognize individual levels and you can apply them for any instrument. This class is detailed for futures. You can use it 100% for stocks, for day trading and swing trading. And I will give you the information on how to do that. We teach you precise buy zone, sell zones, how to manage risk, 
and risk management. We teach you what is a high odd pattern and a setup that I trade every single day. Uh, it has to meet some criteria. And then you have 75% chances of winning in that trade. I don't get in a trade unless I have a 75% odd trade. <laughs> if I don't have it, I don't trade it. I don't want to do the 50-50 because then I have a 50% chance of stopping out of that trade. And I want to increase my chances of winning in a trade and not being stopped out of a trade. And that's the biggest deal because guess what? You need to have a really high odds setup to get that velocity, to get that price velocity. I teach you trading psychology and basically the most important thing that I teach you is putting the puzzle together, okay? Putting the puzzle together. We actually have on our website, if you go to tradeoutloud.com forward slash futures, we have the full class curriculum at the bottom of the page and you can see what we're teaching. Every single chapter is gonna be a five-day event. It is live, you can ask questions in a live market environment. And guess what? If you don't fully understand it, you just shoot me an email or call me and say, hey, I really didn't understand that risk to reward ratio. And I really didn't understand that strategy you were talking about because we teach 10 strategies. It's like, okay, I really don't understand it. And I get with you one-on-one -on -one in this Zoom room and we talk about that strategy. So you understand it because to me, it is really important to develop self-sufficient traders and not followers. Okay, I want self-sufficient traders. I want my traders to think for themselves. You should see the trading room at, right now. I have my students that are keeping me updated about the market at any single time because they know what I know right now. And they have been, some of them have been with me since 2015 when we initiated this Power Inc. of Futures course, which is highly successful because you can start trading with a smaller size account, right? The minimum requirement here in the U.S. is $5,000. I definitely don't recommend you trade only $5,000, but if you have only $5,000, by all means, you can trade micros. Don't get greedy with a full contract. Trade micros. So we teach you a lot of things in our class, including strategies, psychology, like I said, technical analysis. We have a technical analysis chapter that is taught in two days. It's that big, Okay. So including with the course, you're gonna have the on-demand recording, you have the e-manual, right? Which is over 300, like 50 pages. Uh, you only have a member, you have member only lectures. If you think that this lecture was awesome and if you learned something from this lecture, you can only imagine what I'm teaching my traders. We have group mentorship sessions. Uh, we have, I provide everyone with the platform layout because part of, a, part of successful trading is having a really good platform layout so you don't toggle charts because you need your undivided attention to patterns and not just zooming in charts or zooming out charts. You also have support throughout your learning process. You get risk charts because guess what? If you don't know how to position size, I provide you that information. Uh, the course is going to start March 30th through April 3rd, and it is a five-day online education, and you also get to trade with me for 30 days, and then you can join the trading room. Um, the class tuition is $49.97. We have installments uh, available, and for this whole duration into, um, into the uh, course, uh, uh, when the course begins, uh, we are waiving the $500 uh, installment risk. So if you want to find out more information about our course, our course is online. It is, uh, I am teaching the course and it is via Zoom room. So you log into the same, uh, it is a different room where I teach the class, but um, definitely if you want more information, you can uh, go to tradeoutloud.com for slash futures where we have a thorough description. And if you want even more information about the class, Email us at info at I'm going to send you the full uh, class synopsis, and I'm also going to send you some more information, additional for, uh, uh, for the class installments, et cetera. So if you have any questions at all, shoot me an email, info at .com, and I'm going to answer that for you. Okay. So I'm going to start answering some questions right now. Um, Jose, that's awesome. We have direct contact with you. Yes, everybody does. Uh, yes, we do have a course which is scheduled each month. 
and it's typically at the end of the month. Uh, if you want to join, you could just click on the link uh, and uh, tradeoutlaw.com for slash futures and it takes you to that page. Paul, do you read the time sales tapes as part of your analysis? No, I don't. Uh, Stan, uh, do you send out replays links? Yes, I do. Obviously for the class and even for this webinar as well. Okay. Uh, let's see what else? Yes, recording is available. Okay, let's see, let's see, let's see. Most of them I've answered. Okay. Uh, are the classes all day long? No, that's a good question. Uh, the classes are from 6.30 till about nine o'clock, 8.30, nine o'clock, 9.30, depends on how many questions are. Um, I'm curious, did you trade the limit downs? Yes, I did. We, we did not trade, like we, we did not initiate the trade, the trades when uh, the market was uh, limit down or limit up. We waited for the market to open, but yes, we traded every single day. Um, D, thank you so much. I learned something new, very informative. Uh, 6.30 p.m. 6 30 p.m. So we're waiting, but now I like if if things are if 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 we're gonna have this lockdown, I may switch the time. I, we have so many students out of Europe, and uh, I know that it's not very pleasant, and they're very tired <laughs> when we wrap up here at nine o'clock. It's three o'clock in the morning in Europe by then. So uh, we're probably gonna see how many students we have in this class, and we may be able to shift it around lunchtime. So they can, uh, so they can attend uh, better. And since everybody, almost everybody's at home. All right, I know there was another question. Todd, I'm looking for your question right now. So I'm scrolling, scrolling. Just, okay. Okay, Todd is not familiar with futures. Uh, just wondering what kind of spreads and liquidity you are experiencing during, during this time. The volume is incredibly high. There is no spread, very, very tight. Uh, so there's uh, the difference between, in case you guys don't know what the, what a spread is, it's the difference between the bid and the ask, and it's like super tight. It's by the tick. So very, very liquid. And in fact, the $6 billion market, the S&P, the mini S&P trades, uh, the mini S&P trades, tra the transactions per day are $6 billion. So very, very much liquidity. Um, so yeah, I, I, uh, so um, Todd, it's pretty much like swing trading. So it's not like options trading. So uh, we have entry stops and targets and we position size for those just like you do for, uh, for stocks. But instead of share sizing, you position size because you're using contracts. So instead of shares, there are contracts. I hope that answered your question. The mini &E S&P are, uh, micros are very liquid. Yes, uh, Ron, they're very liquid. I have traded, I have been, uh, when they first came out on May 6, 2000, uh, 2019, I was the first one to get into a micro because I was very curious and I went live. I went with only with one micro because I didn't know what to expect because I wanted to see the liquidity and it was perfect from the beginning. Yes, the micros are trading or carbon copying the uh, full size contracts. Very, very liquid. Very liquid. And like I said, if you look through our portfolio, uh, let me see here. Let me just go to the portfolio real quick here. Okay, here it is. You can see here micros only. You see this? Of course, Lisa, I teach everything from A to Z. So from A to Z, everything that I trade and every the results that you see here, I teach how to obtain these results. So this is the method. This is a true testament. The portfolio is a true testament to our teaching method. We What we teach is how we trade, 100%. So you can see them right here, um, Ron, you can see them right here, micros only, micros only. Okay, so we had 50 points here in NASDAQ, but NASDAQ, guess what? NASDAQ had a huge stop, okay? NASDAQ had a huge stop. So typically what I do, and this is what I also teach, is uh, me this method of trailing that I'm using, is that even if you start with a wider stop, 
uh, at the time of the trigger, you always evaluate and I teach you how to evaluate it and the time frames that you need to evaluate to choke the stop up and to reduce your risk as soon as you're uh, entered into a trade. Uh, in an earlier slide, you, sl uh, you stated two, three units per risk uh, per unit uh, of reward. Uh, shouldn't it be the other way around? If you're risking, so if you're risking, um, I don't know what I, where I said that. Uh, so risk to reward, when you're risking, no, your risk has to be small, right? So when you're risking, let's say one R, when you're risking, one R is one risk unit. So when you're risking one R, let's say $500, you're looking for a reward of at least two to three times. The reward should be two to three times the size of the outcome of the trade, meaning the reward has to be two to three times. Uh, do I take vacations from the trading room? Um, well, I was planning on going to Europe this year, uh, but that is down. So I don't think I'm gonna be taking any vacations this year. Uh, I, however, I do not trade and I take the normal kind of, you know, t days off that you guys take as well. Like uh, Chris for Christmas and New Year's, I don't trade. And we have a private Twitter feed where I post all the trading ideas that are not very, um, um, let's say, uh, on a small time frame. So I do continuous posts. I don't personally trade, uh, take vacations from the markets. I don't take vacations. Uh, can we shadow trades? 100% Paul. So everybody that is in the trading room um, can have the same result. Uh, even if you're trading micros, obviously, you can position size to your size, uh, but, uh, or with full contract, depending on what you decide to trade, and it's depending on the risk and your account size. But of course, that all the trades that I post and I call in the trading room, they're called five minutes to three minutes before the trigger. Rarely that we see something like, I can't remember the last time where we said, let's get in here. Okay, so we can use market, buy at market or short at market. I don't recall. And we don't take a lot of trades. As you can see, go through the portfolio, you can see that we have days where we don't trade at all. For instance, tomorrow is option expiration. I typically don't trade option expiration. I like to take the day off, but taking into consideration, I'm gonna be in the market as well. We do the pre-market game plan, we do all, everything. And if there's an opportunity, we take it. But if we do, don't see any opportunities, we're not gonna be taking the trade or a trade. So I'm very conservative. <coughs> uh, Abel, there aren't many futures trading room. I'm so thankful I finally found. <laughs> okay, yeah. Oh, Jeremy. Love Jeremy. He's such a great, fantastic day trader and swing trader. He does a lot of options. For those of you guys that want to do options, uh, just follow Jeremy. He's great. Uh, Brandon, I'm sorry I logged in late, uh, but what type of broker and account time do I need to trade futures? That's a great question. Well, there are two things that you could do. First of all, um, the minimum requirement is about $5,000 to open a futures trading account. You could open with uh, pretty much any major broker. I like to use major brokers because I want to have access to my money. Uh, remember that there are a lot of brokers that uh, are not around anymore. And that happened in 2008. And remember when financials were really shaken, right? So you want to go with a big broker. I use TD Ameritrade. I trade stocks. You could also trade options on it, et cetera. Uh, so yes, D, yes. Uh, okay. Um, Nada, uh, what, do I, what do I think about Top Step Trader? Well, I have my nephew that has started with Top Step Trader actually because I guided him. It was a present from me two Christmases ago because it keeps him in a very tight uh, uh, daily limit. And this is exactly what makes you or breaks you as a trader. Uh, thanks. Can you talk about commissions? Commissions are super low. So if you're making, you know, um, if, if you're learning how to trade on this caliber, the commissions are like close to zero. So commissions are very low, $3, uh, $3 and 14 cents around that, around that, um, per contract. Um, Okay. Thanks. Thanks. Yeah. 
Very cheap. Brandon, um, the method that I teach is, uh, uh, it teaches you how to trade high velocity moves. So I would not get out of bed for a two point move in the mini SMP. Okay. I would not get out of bed. I would just sleep through the whole morning and then just, <laughs> I would just get a job somewhere. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Albert, not sure. So your question, if you are an experienced trader, can you simply play for the, of course. Yeah. You can trade the trading room. It's not, um, having the class is not prerequisite. Uh, when do you switch to June? I already switched to June, Ron. I'm already trading the June contract right now. They expire, uh, they expire tomorrow. So, uh, you're not going to be, so I usually, um, I roll into the next contract a week and a day before the expiration. That's when I roll. If I'm in a swing trade, it depends on the price, but I like to roll one week and a day before they expire. And they expire tomorrow. Tomorrow is quadruple witching option expiration day, by the way. Huge, huge expiration. A lot of options expire, yeah. All right, Albert, awesome. You love the presentation. I'm Thankful. Thank you so much, guys, for sticking around. I know it's late, it's nine o'clock. I never seem to have like a webinar that is only like 60 minutes or 50 minutes. And I'm so jealous of all the presenters that are, you know, trying to, you know, that are literally are all wrapped up and within an hour or 45 minutes, I'm like, I'm getting like always tons of questions. Uh, Camelish says futures trading is open 24 seven. Um, then there could be some more opportunities throughout the day. So how does it uh, work since the day trading room is only nine to 12? I only trade from nine to 12. I only trade because my focus is so, so, I mean, if you would be in the trading room, you would know, like I am so a hundred percent focused on the trades. Like to me, it could be a phone ringing beside me. It could be like, I don't know, anybody, you know, just, just talking around and I cannot hear them. I have a hundred percent focus to make money and that's what I specialize in. However, uh, if there are any trading opportunities, we teach in the class uh, how to take advantage of the 24 hour market. Uh, Paul, that's a great question. Can a guest come into the trading room? We have a guest pass, it's $25 a day. If you go to our uh, website under the trading room, we have a $25 pass for a day in the trading room. We don't really encourage um, these, uh, uh, you know, trials in the trading room, you know, like well, one day or it, it, the, some, sometimes they're, they're not really relevant. For instance, we had a lot of traders that joined within the last two weeks and took the one day or uh, uh, we had a two day trial or whatever. Um, um, and uh, they register for that. Uh, but um, sometimes, you know, you have a week with max, uh, of, let's say um, uh, a day with maximum volatility where I don't take a trade. So you're not going to get anything out of that. So that's why I'm, don't, I'm not really encouraging like even one day open houses or anything like that. You really need to stay in the trading room to experience because the trading room, I don't only call trades. I do lectures like this all the time. And we talk about position size and we talk about strategies and we talk about candlesticks and we talk about everything under the sun. So it's not only uh, coming on the mic and say, S&P long, 2505, stop, 2706. Okay, boom, we're triggered. Okay, we're gonna be doing trailing right now. No, so it's not like that. So we, I'm constantly on the mic and just explaining what's happening in the market. Um, do I, do I have a recording of past chat rooms? No, we don't. We don't, we don't keep recordings of trading rooms. Every day is day by day cases. And it's not really, uh, you know, um, we, we don't share its proprietary information. And if you decide to join, then, um, all that information you absorb, or you could take notes from that, but we don't record it. We share too much proprietary information in there to, uh, to share it around. And there are people that are paying. It's not fair to all the subscribers, uh, you know, just to offer it for free. So I hope that makes sense. All right, guys, this is a wrap. Thanks so much for attending. Uh, if you're interested in the class, email me. Like I said, uh, you know, the time is really, cool, you know, goes by so fast. Learn how to trade, learn how to make money. Okay, thanks, guys. Have a great night and uh, stay safe.
wherever you are. Stay safe. Hey, Guillermo. Thanks, guys. Have a good night. Bye.